welcome back to Evil Shenanigans World Headquarters and Training Center. And as you can see, everything is covered in a fine layer of sawdust. So that can mean only one thing. The handle has been shaped. Here's where we are right now. We've got the curly maple sanded up to, let's see, about 400 grit, I think. It's a nice smooth finish. And we've got the initial grinds done on the blade. Well, it's really just kind of layout grinds. It's not down to final thickness or anything like that. You see, it's still pretty, pretty thick on the edge profile. We're just kind of getting it all laid out. So on the, the false edge up here at the top, I'm gonna to do a hollow grind. I've done that on one other knife and it was pretty cool. So I wanna try that again on this one and then this will just be kind of a standard convex grind for the final final shape so give it a little bit stouter edge profile for chopping and after that it's really just kind of clean up the blade and then we're gonna gun blue it and stain the handle which i'll film doing that because that's pretty cool but so far it's looking pretty good I like the way it feels. This is the uh, new and improved handle design. So it's a little bit longer handle. So you've got more of that kickback. Keeps it in your hand when you're chopping. Doesn't, doesn't want to come out. And I really like the carbon fiber pins so far too. It seems to be really nice to work with. It's looking good. I like it. A nice little slight taper to the tang. It gets a little narrower as you go back towards the end. So the thickest point of the knife is right here, where all the stress would be from chopping anyway. So it's looking good so far. So all right, just kind of another little update, progress report. And we'll check back in later. Okay, so now we're on to our next step. We've got the edge ground down just a little bit closer. It's not quite sharp yet, but we're approaching sharp. And we've got the hollow grind put in on the false edge. It's not super drastic. I try to use as wide a radius as I can, just so there's a, so I don't really want the top edge sharp on a big knife like this for what it's gonna be used for. I don't really like it sharp on both sides, but. And then cleaned up the blade and degreased it, getting ready for the gun bluey. I just use a B12 carburetor cleaner for the degreaser. So we're gonna use leather dye. I like the dark brown color for dyeing the wood. And I just use the wool daubers like you would for leather work. So I'm gonna use a brand new one because all the other ones I have are kind of crusty. And then for gun bluing, I just use the Birchwood KC Super Blue. And I put it in a spray bottle. Uh, you can buy this pretty well at any store that has a sporting goods section. Um, I think I got that at Walmart. I think you can get it at Academy or you know, just about any place. So first thing we're gonna do is we'll start with the handle. Uh, we'll put the leather dye on the handle and make sure the blade's cleaned up, that none of it really gets on there. It won't really hurt it if it does, but I like to just try to work clean if it's possible. Um, and then we're just gonna spray the super blue all over the metal, including up on the tang. Uh, actually, no, we're gonna super blue first and then we're gonna dye. And then we're just gonna rest it in the vise where the blade isn't touching any of the metal and we're gonna let it set. So let me get the camera set up and hopefully I can show you how that works. So we got our super blue. We're gonna start back here on the tang. Be 
sure to wear gloves when you do this. Just gonna kind of dry the wood off a little bit. I'm trying not to touch the metal with the paper towel. Really don't want to disturb the bluing solution. I think that'll work. Just get a nice even coat of your leather dye all over the wood. If it gets on the metal part, that's no big deal. It's not gonna hurt it. Just wanna make sure that you get everywhere. You don't have any spots that got missed. To just kind of go back over it and make it make it look wet the entire thing. You're shooting for a kind of an even color over the entire handle. You gotta remember to get up here on the end. I want to leave it blank. All right, that's pretty much it. I'm just going to set it up here so it kind of rests. And the blade isn't touching the vise. And it's just kind of resting on the end of the handle. Take the gloves back off. Cap that so I don't spill it. So there's where we are so far. Now the next little step here, there's about a bajillion different ways you can finish this gun bluing solution on a knife or whatever um, about the best thing to do is leave it alone uh, let it set for overnight if you can um, if you get kind of impatient uh, it's at least going to be several hours because you're basically waiting for all of this gun bluing that you just put on here to turn to rust it's going to look all crusty and gross and disgusting and you think you're, you have messed it up but you haven't just leave it alone let it do its thing let's see I don't like that streak right there so let's give him another coat
can apply that gun bluing with the dauber or paper towels or whatever you want to apply it with, the spray bottle seems to work the best. Uh, it just gives it a nice even coat. And if you leave it set there until it, it rusts, Gun I've got some leather down on my fingers. Um, if you leave it set there until it rusts, um, then you hit it with steel wool and knock all that rust off of there. That finish will be extremely durable. Um, I, when I first started gun bluing knives, I just kind of wipe it on there and let it set for a little bit and then work it with steel wool and I never really liked the finish. It kind of came out blotchy. This will be a really, really dark black finish uh, and it'll be really durable, but you just gotta put it on there and leave it alone, um, at least for several hours. It'll all be dry and you can see it's already kind of turning that brownish color. That whole thing will, will be way browner than that. And it'll look like you, you rusted it up and ruined it, but that's really what you're looking for. Um, and then you just buff it off with, I use four aught steel wool. Uh, and then there'll be a nice, thick, heavy black finish on that blade underneath all that crusty, disgusting looking rust. And that's what we're wanting. So it'll be really, really durable. Um, and then once we get that done, we'll kind of, um, we'll do the final sharpening on the blade. Um, buff up the false edge right here. Um, and we may, we may kind of hit the edges on the spine of the knife, just so they stand out a little bit. And then we'll go on to the kind of final finishing steps, which is pretty fun too. So we're almost finished with this. And of course I'll, I'll make a sheath for it. get it all ready to move off to its new home, which will hopefully will be you. Hopefully this is your knife. I'm really liking those carbon fiber pins. That's gonna be nice. I've been using the mild steel pins and they're all right, but they're just not as nice to work with. So this will be, this will be kind of cool. Something new. So there you go. Birchwood KC Super Blue and a spray bottle and leather dye. I think I got that at Hobby Lobby. Yeah, there's a sticker right there. Hobby Lobby. And the little wool dauber thing that is right there by the leather dye where you buy it. So that's what you need. And if you're curious about doing all the handle layout and doing the grinds on the handle and all that junk, uh, go check out our knife making series. I think it was four or five parts. And we kind of go over all that stuff a little more in depth. Um, but if you're in the middle of a project and you're kind of getting stuck or, or if you're struggling with handles, send us a message. I'll be happy to help you if I can. I should be teaching a class on how to do this before too long. In the fall, I think. If we get enough people sign up, that is. So, there we go. All right, so once uh, this sets for a while, I guess it will, it'll probably be good by this afternoon. It's still early in the morning now. Well, I say early, it's like 10 o'clock. Once I move on to the next step, I'll, I'll check back in with everybody and kind of show you how to finish that thing out. All right, well, thanks for watching. All right, so it has been several hours and this is what it looks like right now. So it's kind of what I was talking about. Once it looks like you've ruined it and destroyed hours and hours of work, you're about there. So everything's dry and all of the blued surface has rusted. So that's what we're looking for.
So that should produce a really dark finish and it should be really hard to wear it off. So we're gonna get set up. I'll set the camera up so I don't have to hold it and try to do this. But we're gonna use uh, four aught steel wool and we're just gonna knock the rust off of it and kind of polish the handle a little bit. And then we'll use some Windex to neutralize the acid because uh, we don't want it to continue to rust once we get finished. And then we'll kind of move on from there. All right. So I'm gonna start up here. We're just gonna rub with steel wool. get through that rust so there's a nice dark color under lying underneath all that crud Also take the same steel wool and just kind of buff the handle with it a little. It seems like when you put the leather dye on there, it kind of makes the grain, the wood grain pop back up just a little bit. It's not bad, but and we'll, there's some more steps to finishing that handle left still, but kind of get it off to a good start. So our edge isn't sharp yet, but it's on its way to being sharp, so you still want to be kind of careful. Don't let it get you.
So again, that was Windex. The gun bluing is essentially it's just an acidic reaction. And so you don't want that acid setting on there. Once you've finished, because uh, it'll continue to basically rust it. So you'll come back in a day or two and your blade will be all rusty again. All right, so that's kind of where we're at now. There's still some rust down in the little, the little pockets from the rough forge finish. But I'll work those out slowly. And then we'll do the final sharpening on the edge. Um, buff, maybe buff that out, kind of shine it back up. And then we'll do our final finish work looking pretty good really liking that handle alright so I'll check back in here in just a little bit okay so we've got everything kind of polished up got the edge sharp now and it is shaving sharp and I've soaked it for just a little bit in boiled linseed oil which if you use that for the first time and you see it gets up on your blade you're like wow that looks like a nice finish I'll rub that all over the blade don't do it it turns into this sticky mess that you will have to take off before you send it out to somebody or use it it looks cool, but the reality is it's a disaster. So I usually just wipe that off the little bit that gets up there on the Ricasso area with some B12 carburetor cleaner because I pretty well use that for anything and everything. So the last step. is to apply our wax. I've just been using uh, beeswax for leather protector. I think there's some better stuff you can get. I don't remember what it's called now. This is kind of the final little thing. Uh, you want to be careful at this point because it's knife sharp. So get a big old blob of wax. And we're gonna smear it all over the handle and all over the blade. This will give it kind of a nice protective layer. And just kind of finishes it out. I think I got about three times as much wax as I actually needed. the idea anyway move the camera back just kind of rub that in I usually will hit it with some WD-40 as well kind of make a nice little wax and oil mixture it kind of polishes up that wood helps seal it protect it really does the same thing with the handle with the uh, blade I mean pretty proud of this one so this is definitely the, the best elemental knife I've made if not one of the better knobs I've made, period. Shoot it with a little WD-40. Because that stuff is magic. It's good for just about everything.
one of my favorite things to do at WD-40 is do a hot blue finish on like this general blacksmithing stuff. That was pretty fun. Plus there's a lot of smoke. There we go. I may do a few more coats on the handle itself. The more I handle it, it'll kind of rub that finish off a little bit. So it usually takes a couple of times for me to get it the way I want it to look. Here's our blade so far. This has got a nice kind of convex shaped edge. So I sharpen it on the belt grinder with the slack belt for the final sharpening. So it takes kind of that flat grind and, and rolls it out towards the edge like this. So it's got a little more support for chopping. Really like the hollow grind up on the false edge. It's a nice little addition. Smoothed off all the corners be a really nice nice thing to hold and use once it's blued and get some oil on it you kind of see the fullers a lot better kind of gives it some contrast so the fuller forged in down the sides say there you go kind of see it a little better gotta get the light to hit it just right you can see where the edge starts, a sharp line, forged in the plunge lines. So there's very minimal grinding on this knife, which is really nice. And I really do like the, the rough forge finish. You know, there's, there's no hiding anything. You want fullers in there, you gotta forge them in. Um, you know, you make a mistake, it's there. So it's kind of a good measuring stick for, you know, where you are as a smith. Shows your skill level, or, you know, in my case, lack thereof. This is pretty fun right here. It'll, it'll all tie in with the sheath, hopefully. I figured out though, for what I had planned, I put it on the wrong side. It should have been on this side. So I'll make a right-handed sheath. So I refuse to make a left-handed sheath. That's a little dig at James. He's a lefty. So. At any rate, this is looking pretty good. Um, we'll start working on the sheath the next day or two. Just kind of depends on what all is going on. And we'll get this project wrapped up. And we've got something pretty cool planned for the big reveal when it's all finished. That'll be the last video that we'll use for the uh, contest. But we are looking for 100 subscribers on our YouTube channel. So if you've already subscribed, you need to enlist the help of several of your friends. Get them on there, subscribe to the channel. That'll help you keep up with all the shenanigans we have going. And in the case of this, that's how you're going to win this knife. So this will be going to one of you guys. Uh, if you're here local in the Wichita Falls area, you can come by and pick it up. I'll give you a tour of the uh, Evil Shenanigans World Headquarters and Training Center. Kind of check out where we make all this craziness. Uh, if you're not local, I'll mail it to you. I'll ship it. Maybe I'll throw in some, some cool swag what we've got left. I hope you are a medium or a small t-shirt size because that's all I have. But either way, I'll throw some stickers in there. But Man, I'm really liking this knife. Kind of hate to give it away. I'd like to keep this one. But since I told you I'd give it away, I guess I will. That is looking good. I like that. I really like this curly maple. been buying our curly maple from um, 
was it tag mountain maple supply they have a website just google them they're good folks i sent sent them one of our new hunter seeker prototypes the other day just because i don't know i've probably given away more knives than i've sold to be honest with you but i'm just happy somebody has them and they they like them and hopefully you'll use them something like this the more you use it the cooler it's going to look the the bluing will wear down some it'll develop a patina the handle will kind of change over time get wear spots sweat spots in it i think that's pretty cool to see i like to see something that's not abused but you know well used you enjoy using it this will be a fun one chop stuff with it'll certainly cut down rose bushes and not that I'm telling you, you go cut down all your rose bushes, but sometimes you gotta be a good tree tree limb chopper. So there we go. I think we'll wrap this video up. And I guess I'll probably do a video or two on making the sheath. I'm gonna try something different with the uh, the stitches. So I'll kind of talk about that a little bit. Hopefully not screw it up too bad. But I'm calling this knife finished. So ladies and gentlemen, this is the fifth element knife. If you missed any of the other videos, this is the uh, elemental knife that I learned how to make from taking Jason Knight's online forge series he calls it the elemental knife and this is the fifth one of these i've made so hence the name the fifth element knife all right well thanks for watching be sure to subscribe to the channel and list three or four friends have them subscribe to the channel because one of you guys is going to get this thing all right. Well, thanks for watching. Hang in there, everybody.